Hi, my name is Gabriel Ponestroik. I'm a senior consultant at Ricardo Energy and Environment, uh, and I'm also the technical lead on the interim phosphate delivery plan project that Ricardo are working on for Herefordshire Council. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a run through of how to use the phosphate budget calculator tool that we have de uh, developed uh, as part of the stage one of the interim uh, phosphate delivery plan project. Now, as you can see in front of you, uh, I've got some hypothetical development site details, and you'll need uh, details like these in order to input uh, different uh, bits of information to the, to the various stages of the phosphate budget calculations. Um, it's worth noting here that the wastewater treatment works uh, still needs to be determined for my hypothetical development site, um, and we'll talk through how to uh, generate that input um, using the tool itself. So. Um, moving over to the tool, this is an uh, Excel-based tool, um, and um, the first worksheet is an introductory worksheet. It contains uh, a bit of general information uh, about uh, the kind of methodology um, that was used to determine the inputs to this tool, uh, including the um, uh, reference for the, for the report that contains all of the kind of underlying rationale. Um, that underpins the various inputs that was used for this tool. Um, these uh, stage one to four links will take you to these different worksheets um, for the different stages uh, of uh, the phosphate budget calculations. Um, and it's particularly important to uh, note this key here, which gives you uh, some information on, on which coloured cells you should uh, input values to and, and which should be kind of left alone. Um, so in particular, the um, sky blue cells are drop-down lists um, for which you can select a value from. These yellow ones are um, sort of free text or free value fields where you need to input um, a value. And the uh, sort of pinkish ones are default values that have been predetermined. Uh, however, it is possible to change these under exceptional circumstances um, if you have a sufficient amount of evidence to, to warrant um, a different value being being used uh, where, the, where there's a pink cell with a value already in it. Um, the next bit we're going to look at is the Wastewater Treatment Works Catchments Worksheet, and this links to the Wastewater Treatment Works that your development is going to be connecting to. So on this worksheet we have um, various uh, embedded files that cover uh, wastewater treatment works within the River Lug catchment. Um, so if you double click on any of these, they'll load in the Google Earth Pro software. Google Earth Pro is freely available. You can download it from a link that's uh, embedded in the, in, in the document here. Um, now I know that my um, development site is uh, on the outskirts of Lowminster. Um, and so if I double click on the Lowminster Worcester Road uh, file, I'm assuming I'm probably gonna be uh, near the Lowminster Worcester Road wastewater treatment works, it will ask me if I want to open this file. If I click on open, it will automatically open Google Earth Pro. I'm not going to do this because I've already opened it. It takes a minute to load. So um, I've already sort of preloaded this within Google Earth Pro. And you, uh, this is the output that you'll see um, once you've opened the file uh, from within the tool. So this red line shows the uh, catchment area for the Lowminster Worcester Road Wastewater Treatment Works. My development site is kind of around here somewhere. Um, so I can be pretty certain that I'm going to uh, connect to the Lowman Stores the Road Wastewater Treatment Works. Um, if you load one of these files and, and you've got this area um, and you're sort of somewhere a bit further away from it um, and your development site is, you know, isn't that close to this, this catchment, you may need to make an inquiry with Welsh Water um, as to whether or not uh, you're actually going to connect to that Wastewater Treatment Works. Um, and determining the Wastewater Treatment Works um, is, is very important, uh, it forms a key part of stage one of the phosphate budget calculations. So going back to the introductory page, um, the next thing you have to do is fill out this table one. Uh, table one has three bits of information that will need to be found. Um, the first is the river catchment. Um, uh, this is still different to the wastewater treatment works catchment. This is the river catchment that you're um, that your um, development site will sit within. Um, and for the purposes of the tool, we have got three different potential river catchments uh, within the wider kind of River Y catchment um, that's within the Herefordshire area that your development site might sit within. Um, 
in order to find which of these operational catchments, as we call them, uh, that your development site might sit within, if you go to this link that's under point number one here, um, you will end up at this page. Um, and this is a page where you can search using either a base name, postcode or coordinates um, to find out which uh, operational catchment your development site is going to sit within. So if I go back to my uh, development site details, I take the postcode from here and input that there and run the search. Go down to this operational catchment heading here and there's a few different options. So if we go back to the tool and click on the drop down, we can see that there's an option for arrow lug and through. So I just select that one there uh, as that matches the arrow lug and through option here. It doesn't match any of the other ones uh, that are provided for these operational catchments. So going back to the tool, the next thing we need to find is the sort of drainage type. Um, now, again, there's instructions on how to find this under point number two. Um, if you follow this link here, uh, then it will take you to this website. And then if I go to the search here and paste in the postcode, search for that, it will show me point the map where the development site is. And if I click on this sort of view soil information option, it will change and show us some, some details here on the right hand side and the key thing we're interested in here is, is under this drainage uh, heading where it says uh, the drainage type is freely draining so if i go back to uh, the tool then i can input um, freely draining from this option here um, and then the final bit of information we need to find is the annual average rainfall for the development site so in order to find this, we go down to number three. Again, there's instructions here on how to use uh, the, the website that's linked to here. Um, this website uh, is a page within the, we'll call them the National River Flow Archive website, or NRFA. Um, this takes you to uh, a page that shows the uh, whole area of um, the River Y, so down to the point quite far downstream, it encompasses all of Herefordshire. Um, or most of Herefordshire. Um, and then if we select here, we can ch change a couple of things uh, on this page. So if you uh, click on this drop down next to select spatial data type to view and change that to rainfall, and then click on the legend tab here, um, then we just need to zoom in on the map to wherever our development site is. Unfortunately, this website doesn't come with uh, a uh, sort of search option where you can put postcode or coordinates or something in, you just have to um, sort of find the location by zooming in on the map. Um, and I know my development site is uh, sort of around here somewhere. Um, so you can see this is all one colour. Um, so we just need to read off that colour from the legend. I think that's the uh, 675.1 to 700 uh, annual average rainfall band. And so if we go back to the tool and up to table one, and again, all of the rainfall bands are encoded within this drop down list. So I can just select the relevant one for my hypothetical development site. So that completes everything you need to do on the introductory page. Uh, and all of these values you've selected in table one will, will carry through to uh, other stages. Um, excuse me. Um, will carry through to other stages of the uh, Creative to other stages of the phosphate budget calculations. So moving on to stage one, um, we're going to input the various details that will tell us uh, the amount of phosphorus that this development is going to generate because of uh, the new wastewater that's going to be coming from the people living at the li living within the development. So as you can see, um, these two values here, the occupancy rate and water use, are already filled in. Um, these have been determined in agreement um, with, with Natural England uh, and so it's highly advisable not to change these, although if you have uh, sufficient evidence to support different values, these can be changed. The development proposal is the number of dwellings um, that are going to be built uh, on the development site. So if we go back to um, my development site details, you can see there's 50, uh, de 50 dwellings that are proposed for this development. I can put 50 there. And 
this field is where you select the wastewater treatment works uh, that you, the development's gonna, gonna connect to. So as we previously figured out, it's uh, the Lowminster Worcester Road uh, wastewater treatment works that the development's gonna connect to. Um, and this auto populates a value uh, here in uh, this column. Now, the other thing you might have noticed is that at the top of this table, there's a question, is, this being, uh, is the development being completed for the period before or after 2025? Um, this is due to the fact that some of these wastewater treatment works um, are undergoing uh, upgrades over um, the period up to 2025, and subsequently um, the value here might change depending on whether or not the treatment works is being updated. Uh, and this will have a, an impact on the final output of your phosphorus budget. So, um, if you change, the, if we change this, uh, so select uh, after instead of before, you'll see that that changes from um, one to to zero point five because the Lomas to Worcester Road treatment works is being upgraded. Um, what this means is that if you are uh, connecting to one of these wastewater treatment works that has a, a changing uh, value of the, of the phosphorus that's going to be coming out in its, in its final effluent, um, then you will need to complete two phosphorus budgets, one of which will cover the period uh, between when the development is occupied up to 2025, or up to and including 2025, and the uh, other um, phosphorus budget will cover the period um, after 2025 up until uh, a period of uh, up to a period of 80 years um, or the lifetime of the development. Um, the rationale behind this is all included uh, within the accompanying report for stage one of the uh, interim phosphate uh, delivery plan um, if you need further information on what to do in that situation. For the purpose of this tutorial um, we'll continue uh, just using this value for, for after 2025 um, and as you can see uh, this table at the bottom will auto complete if you input values uh, to the table above it um, and that tells you that the total wastewater load um, that will be generated by the development um, is 2.27 kilograms of phosphorus per year. Um, this will feed through to the later stages of the phosphate budget calculation so you don't need to do anything uh, with this but it's just there for reference. So moving on to stage two of the calculations. Um, stage two calculates the current phosphorus load that is coming from uh, the land uses that, that are currently uh, active on your development site. Um, so if we go back to the um, development site details, as you can see the current site land use is agricultural um, and if we look at the uh, split between different agricultural land uses on the site, um, we've got 1.5 hectares of cereals farming and 1.5 hectares of horticulture. Um, these names for the farming types or agricultural land use types are uh, reference to the categories that are contained within the tool. Um, so you'll need to classify uh, whatever kind of agriculture is on, on the site into one of these categories. Um, so as previously said, we've got cereals and horticulture on the development site. So 1.5 hectares of uh, cereals farming and 1.5 hectares of horticulture. So if we uh, just select those, then you'll see it auto populates the annual uh, phosphorus export um, for the development site um, for each of those different types of land use. And then uh, there's a total down at the bottom here. The reason that this doesn't add up to 0.1 is 0.11 is just uh, because of rounding. The, the numbers behind these are quite long and, and it's just uh, differences in rounding that have ended up with that being 0.11 rather than 0.1. So that completes stage two. Um, as I said previously, if we go back to that quickly, um, these values, as you can see, are just there for reference. They all carry through to the, uh, to the phosphate budget calculations. Um, that happen at the end of, uh, once, once you finish using the tool, uh, in stage four. Um, and stage three uh, of, um, the, uh, of the phosphate budget calculations, um, it's very similar to stage two, except this time we're looking at the uh, phosphorus budget, um, or sorry, the, the phosphorus export from the site uh, that will occur from uh, the new land uses after the development has been built. Um, so if we go back to um, 
the development site details. Um, we've got here the future mix of land uses, which is listed as residential and green space. Uh, and we've got 2.5 hectares of residential land uh, and we've got 0.5 hectares of green space. Again, these names link to the categories that are here within this drop down list. Um, so if we put in the residential urban land for 2.5 hectares, this will generate a value for the phosphorus that's coming from that area of the new development site uh, after it's been developed. And then if we select green space and put in the uh, 0.5 hectares of green space that will be on the site, that also generates a uh, value for phosphorus uh, output for that area of the site. And again, these two are just totals at the bottom. Um, and that actually completes all of the inputs that you need for uh, calculating your phosphorus budget. The last thing to look at uh, is stage four, um, which is automatically calculated for you. Um, it just gives you a breakdown here of the new uh, phosphorus export that's um, coming from wastewater treatment, um, from the, the, the new phosphorus export uh, that's coming from the net change between land uses before and after the, the development site is built. And then in this line, you've got the actual phosphorus budget output. Um, so the development's going to result um, in a 5.69 kilos per year of phosphorus being um, being output based on, on the previous calculations in stages one to three. Um, then an additional 20% buffer is added to the phosphorus budget value. The reason for this is because there are various uncertainties um, in all of the inputs that have gone into uh, stages one to three. Um, it's necessary as part of the kind of simplification that's required um, for uh, generating a phosphorus budget. And in order to account for this uncertainty, a 20% uh, buffer is added to um, the uh, phosphorus budget, which uh, enables the, the estimate to be precautionary, which is obviously in line, in line with the precautionary principle. Uh, that underlines uh, sort of habitat regulations and habitat regulations assessments, which are obviously the driver for having to calculate these phosphorus budgets in the first place. Uh, and finally, the, the um, only other bit to look at here is, is to say that the total amount of phosphorus uh, to mitigate this to make it nice and clear is, is detailed here. Uh, so it's 6.82 kilos uh, of phosphorus per year will need to be mitigated for this hypothetical development. Um, so yes, that, that completes the, the tutorial, um, shows you how to work through the various different stages uh, of, the phosphorus, phosphorus, uh, of the phosphorus budget calculator.